Local Weather Service says it hit the town of Petal near Hattiesburg. Several trees were uprooted and fences torn up. No injuries have been reported. The Weather Service is also serving whether damage in Biloxi was caused by tornadoes. The tornadoes are stemming from what's left of Harvey as it moves to the northeast. That same system is headed our way. For the latest, we're going to toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith. Hey, Scott, speaking of some spooky looking clouds, lowering clouds, you can see this one right here in the New Hope with one of these passing showers early this evening. We've had some showers out there. It looks like the better opportunity for some severe weather around here tomorrow will be uh, from the late morning through the uh, mid to late afternoon. An isolated tornado to is possible in addition to areas of very heavy rainfall. Right now we have some heavy rain in Bruce and Grenada shifting into Coffeyville, southwest of Water Valley, over here into areas west of 55. And we also have a few other spotty showers out there. There was one rogue rotating storm down there northeast of Brookhaven, Mississippi, earlier about an hour ago. That's on the park. But there is the center of now tropical depression Harvey. All of this is shifting to the northeast, and we'll have a chance for some more active weather tomorrow. In these areas, the yellow from northeast to north, Alabama, isolated and brief tornadoes will be possible on our Thursday. Again, isolated in nature, we'll keep you updated. Highs will be in the low 80s. Full forecast in just a few minutes. Hurricane Harvey's destruction is moving people to help, including those here in Mississippi. Several groups in our area are organizing efforts to send volunteers and relief supplies. Our Quentin Smith met with one of those groups today. He joins us live in the studio with more. Quentin. Scott, volunteers have been out since 7 o'clock this morning accepting donations. The truck is located right outside of Walmart. Now, giving back is something South Wire prides itself in. And after seeing the damage and destruction Hurricane Harvey left behind, they immediately decided to take action. Water, hygiene products, clothes. South Wire is on a mission to donate whatever they can to help those who are hit hard by Hurricane Harvey. South Wire is a family company, and uh, we've always believed in giving back to the community, any community that we're that we're in, uh, that we're involved with. So uh, this is just, you know, our way of giving back to our community as, as well as the community in Texas. It made me feel proud to be part of the company, just to do stuff like this, and just to help other people. Volunteers understand the importance of giving back and helping those who lost everything in the deadly storm. During the first day of the donation drive, volunteers nearly filled up this truck with donated items, but they still need more. We're looking for canned goods, uh, anything like that, diapers, uh, clothing, coolers, uh, anything that someone might need that... Uh, that's going through this. One of the big things is water. While it's good for people to make donations, it's also just as important for them to know where it's going. On Wednesday, the Mississippi Secretary of State's office posted helpful tips for those who are wanting to give back. The website also posted a full list of all of the registered charities in the state to help donors avoid being scammed. I think it's very important and uh, with Southwire we have a track record of, you know, we do these type of things. Uh, we did them Several every year, just about we're doing something like this, and we're making sure that it's going to the right place. The stuff that we collect, uh, we have a, a driver coming from our company, and it taking it straight to Texas, so we know it's going to the people that need it. Now, Southwire will, will be taking donations up until Friday. Then they're off to Texas to drop off the donations. Scott, back to you. All right, thanks, Quentin. More help is on the way to parts of flood stricken Texas. Mississippi National Guard members are serving in Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. 30 soldiers and airmen are helping with relief efforts. The soldiers will use helicopters to assist in search and rescue miss missions, while the airmen will help transport other National Guardsmen for response support. They'll be there as long as they're needed. Senator Roger Wicker is sounding off about recent moves by the North Korean leadership. Wicker says he believes Kim Jong-un is unstable, but thinks in spite of the threats, the communist leader won't strike the U.S. or its allies. A recent missile launch that flew over Japan has fueled further tensions between North Korea, the United States, and its allies. Kim Jong-un is evil and he's dangerous. I don't think he's suicidal. And as long as he doesn't intend to commit suicide by attacking the United States or uh, an American ship or one of our allies, uh, I think we can continue to work diplomatically um, to, to clip his wings. 
Wicker believes continued economic sanctions will be a deterrent to the North Korean leaders. A February break-in leads to federal charges for three Winston County men. 21-year-old Devin Watson, 23-year-old Darius Watson, and 23-year-old LaSamuel Taylor are all facing a two-count federal indictment for allegedly stealing 13 handguns from the Louisville Western Auto Store during a February burglary. All three men are charged with stealing firearms from a licensed dealer and possession of stolen firearms. The men are being held in a federal lockup. The suspect who barricaded himself from authorities for hours in Tishomingo County last night has been identified. 34-year-old William Lee McVeigh of Iuka sits in the Tishomingo County Jail tonight. Multiple agencies were serving a warrant at a home near Payden when authorities say he barricaded himself inside. After several hours of negotiating, McVeigh surrendered and was taken into custody. Students in Mississippi State University's College of Architecture, Art and Design had some real-world experience on a big project. Today, nine groups presented plans for the new Armstrong Middle School that's set to open in 2019. Majors within the CAD department teamed up to design the new school. Everything from inside the building to the outside structure. A panel of judges critiqued each group. Students had two weeks to complete the entire project, but say it prepared them for what's to come. You really get the, the feel of a real-life project, and this is the first time we've really done that, and that was so valuable. In the real world, we're actually going to be working with these people in every day. We're never going to be working just with our major, so it really taught us a lot on how to collaborate with each other and to come up with a project like it really would be in the real world. Students say the intense project prompted a lot of sleepless nights, but showed them that their dreams are becoming a reality. Oh, definitely yeah. solidifies mm -hmm. that. Nothing can sure. keep me up until 5 a.m., yeah. get one hour sleep, and then go after it again. Yeah, if you, if you don't have a passion sleep. for it, I think you wouldn't be here still as a senior. Yeah. First place was the group who designed illuminating innovative ideas. These ideas will go into the actual building of Armstrong Middle School. Temperatures right now in the 70s. Winds are beginning to pick up in the east and southeast, and we will likely see some stronger wind gusts in the region tomorrow, maybe over 45 miles per hour as the remnants of Harvey swirls on through. Full forecast is next. Pharmacy there in Vernon. All right, here's our forecast for Thursday. We start out in the 70s, back into the upper 70s, the low 80s during the course of the day. Uh, chance for showers and storms all day long, and from mid morning through the afternoon, we likely will have a chance for some severe weather in our region. 70s and 80s, there's our forecast for our Thursday. Now, let's talk about the severe weather threat overall. It's on the low end of the spectrum. Damaging wind tornadoes in the low end of the category spectrum here. Flooding possible, especially across our northern and western counties, where you will be a little bit closer to the uh, western side of the system, and that's the heavy rain-producing side of the remnants of Harvey. But these areas in yellow, as we talked about earlier, eastern Mississippi, northern Alabama, an isolated tornado or two possible as we get into our Thursday. Still can't rule out some uh, spinning thunder showers this evening, but at this point, it looks like things should be fairly tame overall. Heavy rain in Charleston over there, just east of Grenada and just to the north of Bruce right now. Most of our area and not really seeing any rain at this point, but that could fill on in later on tonight. You can see the actual center of Harvey. Now with the pressure down here near Alexandria, Louisiana, this will be coming back to the northeast, and that center will be somewhere here across northern Mississippi by this time tomorrow evening in the part of West Tennessee. So here's the big picture. To the east of that center of circulation, isolated corners will be possible through tomorrow. Likely the throw will wind down by about 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. West of the center, that's where the heaviest rain is going to be found. So generally, just west of the coverage area. Now, all this rain should be wrapping up sometime Friday morning. Yeah, there could be a little bit of rain left Friday afternoon. But at this point, football is looking great for high school and also for college games on Saturday. This holiday weekend is looking pretty good. Here's Futurecast picking up on some of the activity we have now. We'll have some of these, some of these rain bands develop around that center. There it is out there in the Delta tomorrow. So during the morning hours, some of those could start to pulse on up, and we may see some of these uh, speed storms tomorrow morning and some of the afternoon right here. There's a circulation to the northwest of that. 
as well as the other rains be to the east. We will see the showers and other showers on the western roads. I'll talk with Baptists. We look at the signs and symptoms of addiction. Hi, I'm Jeanette Manning, Chemical Dependency Counselor at Baptist Behavioral Healthcare. Some people are able to use recreational or prescription drugs without experiencing negative consequences or addiction. If you're worried about your own or a friend or family member's drug and alcohol use, it is important to know that help is available. It is essential to learn about the signs and symptoms of drug addiction. People experiment with drugs for many different reasons. Out of curiosity, to have a good time, peer pressure, to ease stress and anxiety, or depression. If your drug use is causing you problems in your life, at work, at school, home, or in your relationship, you likely have a drug abuse or addiction problem. Some common signs and symptoms of drug abuse include Neglecting responsibilities at school, work, or home, such as flunking classes at school, skipping work, or neglecting your children. Using drugs under dangerous conditions or taking risks while high, such as driving while on drugs, using dirty needles, or having unprotected sex. Another sign of drug use is when the individual may cause problems in relationships, such as fights with significant others or family members. If a person continues to use drugs and alcohol, even if it causes major problems in their life, they probably have a drug or alcohol problem. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptists when we will discuss addiction recovery. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Tupelo's Jet Johnson continues to lead the Golden Wave on and off the field. Hear more from our Student Athlete of the Week next in sports.
One, two, three, four. Here's WCDI Sports with Tom Apple. The Tupelo Golden Wave have gotten off to a fast start here in the early season with wins over Meridian and Corinth. One of the stars leading that Golden Wave defense is Dandy Dozen linebacker Jet Johnson. Johnson continues to lead them blankets on and off the field. And our WCBI Sports' is Jonathan Flippo has more with our Student Athlete of the Week. The Tupelo Golden Wave are looking to go 3-0 this week with Clarksdale rolling into town on Friday. One of the biggest reasons to the Golden Wave's success is the three-year defensive starter, Jeff Johnson. Johnson has always been a nightmare for opposing coaches and players. He on in his early days of playing football. My family's been a football family. into his sophomore year. Thank you. 
the edge on the other side. So uh, you know, they do a very, very good job to, of uh, disguising things. You know, secondary does a very good job of uh, starting one way and then all of a sudden snap they roll it somewhere else. So, I mean, they, they just do a really good job. They're really sound and they're really good at, at disguising what they're going to come with. One of the things I think the uh, the, the level of, of how hard our guys play, that that's which is one of the most important things to me, the effort and the strain in which they give. Um, you know, and then also just, you know, how we that this how we're fitting everything. You know, the guys, the, the overall understanding of everybody within the scheme and what they're doing and what the expectations of them are. Um, you know, I've been really pleased with that. The sports world is responding to the devastation Hurricane Harvey left behind in Houston. The Mississippi State Bulldogs will wear this decal on the back of their helmets this upcoming game against Charleston Southern as a way to honor those affected by the storm. The Ole Miss Rebels look to start its season the exact opposite of how its Mississippi counterparts began the year last year as the Rebels gear up for South Alabama. Starting quarterback Shea Patterson says the Rebels plan to treat the Jaguars the same way they'll treat a national powerhouse. We're going to take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, our motto this year is just to go one and zero like it was last year, and uh, you know we're treating South Alabama like it's Alabama. So, um, you know, we're approaching every game the same, not different. It's a huge relief for us. Um, you know, all that we've gone through, you know, in the off season and all the work that we put in, we're just ready to show everybody, you know, what we have to offer, and you know, just really excited to play. We'll have a last year forecast coming up next. right now but later tonight and tomorrow morning we'll watch to see some storms and showers regenerate and those could carry over to uh, tomorrow afternoon some of them could rotate briefly and produce some isolated tornadoes so we're watching out for that but the weekend that's the big story here nice looking weekend all right sounds good thanks so much Keith. thanks for watching we'll see you back here tomorrow tupelo golden tupelo wave has jed johnson our students